this evening um, standing in for Dr. Sh Joshua Sharfstein, who is caught up in some serious meetings related to uh, health care reform. So I'd act, like to ask Raquel to come up and say a few words. Can you hear me? We've been told to speak into the mic louder than normal. Good evening, everyone. And I just want to say that Dr. Sharfstein called me this morning and said, can you please, please go tonight? I would love to be there, but he could not. Um, I am a proud resident of Prince George's County. I am a very strong supporter of Ms. Pamela Creekmer, who actually allowed me, um, before I worked for the state of Maryland, to support her in her efforts to improve community health and access to health care. Um, Dr. Sharfstein is very excited, as well as the whole state, to have this new hospital. This is a great and ambitious endeavor. And just to see the cars roll up as I walked in, I was like, this is awesome. So this just speaks to this community and our county and the passion we have. I think we really want to emphasize, um, as a state of Maryland, our real aspiration to improve quality health care in Prince George's County and reduce health disparities. That is a key element. And take a population-based approach. This is an opportunity to do something fabulous. And then I would be remiss if I did not mention that we need a strong primary care integrated system and prevention and to combine our efforts with that access system and our public health work. We are very excited about the future and what the Affordable Care Act has to offer, and I think taking a step in this direction and having a new beautiful access point with all efforts and all hands on deck, and we are here to support you. So I am very excited to listen to what you all have to say today, and thank you for having me. At this time, I'd like to call uh, Mark Wasserman, who's Senior Vice President of the University of Maryland Medical System, and he will introduce himself and give you uh, a bit of an update on where we are. So, good evening. So I'm going to go back to Baltimore and tell everybody there, whoa, Prince George's County cares. I mean, this is pretty, pretty impressive. Um, I think my role this evening is um, tell you, I, hey, I'm going to tell you a little bit about me. Um, and then, then, but mostly it's to frame what is the University of Maryland medical system. We know going into a forum like this, we're confusing. And so I'll, I'll try and straighten that out. And then to bring you quickly up to date on where we are in this whole um, ambitious endeavor. And then to be quiet and, and, and listen to you. So just what I was hinting at about, about me is um, I grew up in Prince George's County and uh, graduated from Bowie High School. So, uh, but, but I root for the Ravens and I read the Baltimore Sun, so sorry about that. Um, you know, actually, uh, well, never mind. I'll take too much of your time. But what I, what I want to tell you is that the University of Maryland Medical System has been um, very proud to help play a leadership role in sorting out what I think everyone here in this room knows is an enormously complex and very deep-seated challenge uh, for all of us. Um, it has been truly a pleasure to be part of something that I, I've never, and I've been around and in government and around government and healthcare a long time, a, a truly uh, collaborative effort to try and solve a tricky, tricky, sensitive problem. Uh, and a lot of people have been credited here, um, but the, um, the um, the, the, the kind of teamwork that has developed. Uh, and you know it's not easy when we're dealing with nonprofits and state and, and um, county agencies. Not simple to execute. Um, and what is our goal? Our goal is, couldn't be simpler and couldn't be more ambitious. And that's to produce a transformed healthcare system for Prince George's County. So let, let me step back now and do the first part, which is so what is the University of Maryland Medical System? And we are a private nonprofit 501c3, very closely connected to the state of Maryland. Uh, we are an enterprise, albeit a very special one. We were created by an act of the Maryland General Assembly in 1984, and we work in, we couldn't do our job without a symbiotic relationship with the University of Maryland School of Medicine, that clinical horsepower and expertise that has been discussed um, so far and rightly. Together with the School of Medicine, we bear the, the unique mission of serving as Maryland's academically centered healthcare system. 
It's a unique system which we bear. Um, for your purposes, to understand that academic connection, what does it bring um, as, we, as we organize? It brings access, as, as was being highlighted here, to superb tertiary and quaternary health care, the, co the most complex stuff. You want to be sure you have it in your home county. It brings you access to clinical trials, to the, to the most advanced research that, that's going on. And maybe most importantly, in terms of our overall mission, it connects you to the next generation of Maryland health care providers, uh, which is at, at its core one of our, our most important uh, assignments. Um, as, uh, thank, thank you, Brad, for your praise, but it's true. Your state academically health center, health care center, and your University of Maryland School of Medicine are national leaders. And this has happened in the course of a, of a generation, and it's something of which um, you should be very proud. Now I want to just take a couple of minutes to talk to you about um, our role and the vision for a, a new regional medical center here. As the, as the hub for an invigorated healthcare system for, for Prince George's County. Um, I ask you as you not only listen to us tonight, but as this evolves further, please bear in mind that uh, we have a nonprofit, we are a nonprofit, and for us to have a future, we have to think and act as an enterprise, albeit a, a very special one. So in that light, our board, which is appointed by the governor, um, we have an alumni here, uh, Senator Curry, um, has authorized, and we're keeping them very closely informed, has authorized us to proceed uh, in this important undertaking in a phased and deliberate way. So here, here's where we stand today, because I know we, I want to get off the stage here. We went through a, a, a first phase, and, and I would sort of call it creating the vision, get it, just reaching consensus on what it is we're trying to do. Uh, at our expense, we, we brought in consultants, we worked with everyone, and we came up with this initial recommendation that if you, if you want to proceed, we need a, re, a new regional medical center to serve Prince George's County, as well as the three counties to the, uh, to the south in Southern Maryland. This led, you'll recall, to uh, a, the signing of a memorandum of understanding, and I wouldn't uh, understate the importance of that. For the first time, we had all the parties galvanized, ready to go, signing on to a, a single mission. Then, now we've shifted into a much more serious phase of, of this process, um, where we're testing ourselves. Can we bring this all together, holding ourselves toward a target of, of submitting a certificate of need application for, for this new hospital we're discussing next fall? Uh, and that is the test. Are we serious about this? So we've been going through a lot of financial analysis. Uh, we've been going through a lot of physical analysis of, of what would be required here. And it's all been um, steered by a high-level group of, of folks with one common agenda. Uh, Brad, uh, Dr. Sarfstein, who can't be here but has been sort of driving the state agenda, and he's been very, very much doing what you would expect, which is I want to think in broader healthcare terms, there's something, there's something really available to us here in Prince George's County to build something that could be a national leader, not just with a regional medical center at its, at its, as its hub, but thinking far beyond that. And I'm not a public health official. There are smart people in this room. This is, this is our time to do this. So the, the, we, we also did something that I think um, sets a new standard for the way these opportunities can be presented in that we joined um, financial consultants, KPMG, that's what we know, was something which was a little bit out of the box for us, but sets the stage for something really innovative, and that is engaging the University of Maryland School of Public Health uh, to take the wider view of what, what should happen here to address Prince George's County's needs. And that led to what I think you've all been reading about and you're going to hear now, we're ready to take a next step, which is we want to build um, an academically affiliated regional medical center with a strong and collaborative ambulatory care network we want to develop a clear brand that promotes a high quality health system and encourages residents to return to the county for care. What we're talking about now in terms of the new regional medical center, it, it would be located, as you know, in the, uh, and this was part of the uh, memorandum of understanding, that we want to find the right location to do this properly um, in the central part of the county and to have a new regional medical center um, reached the status it was originally intended to when Prince George's Hospital was created 
many years ago. So what we're talking about is acute care services to, to be provided, which would include uh, medical and surgical services, psychiatry, obstetrics, uh, newborns, nursery and neonatal, and I think um, search for that, that tertiary combination which will deliver the kind of care Brad was des describing. You have the second busiest regional trauma center here in the state of Maryland. Um, it's critically important to the whole state system. Um, you have the capability and you are delivering um, uh, cardiac surgery here. We want, we want you to have a regional cancer center. We want in vitro, in vitro fertilization, perinatal, perinatal services, and stroke and neuro care. How do we see that all roll up physically? And I'm going to move out of here in a second. We see, your, we see a hospital of 259 licensed beds. We assume that discharges would grow from today about 16,000, 17,000 to uh, approaching uh, 21,000 by 2019. Um, and we believe out, outpatient volumes will grow by 3%. All this, we hope, will be housed in a 720,000 square foot building. And you're going to tell us your thoughts about where we should build this, because we can do this. And um, we're, we're very proud to be part of this, and we look forward to hearing your comments this evening. Thank you. So at this time, I'd like to uh, have David Iannucci come up, and he will uh, give us an overview of the four sites that are spread across the back there. Uh, thank you, and good evening. I'm uh, quite pleased to be here. I'm really representing uh, parties uh, at this table. All these organizations have worked together to narrow the number of sites that your regional medical center might be located at. Uh, down to four. I'll talk a little about the process and I'd like to spend just a, two minutes quickly telling you some of the criteria uh, that we looked at and we asked you to think about when it comes to locating this, this facility. First and foremost was a location that was convenient to the existing uh, medical population and the central part of the county is a guiding principle. We look for a, a location that was in the center of the county. As you've, as you've seen, the four sites are all there. Next, we need a site that was accessible to transportation, and that's all modes of transportation. Now, access to the beltway and visibility by the beltway strikes us as a very important attribute, something that would really make this hospital uh, something that we could be proud of in the, in the county that would be so visible from I-495. So I-495 access is important, but metro access and bus transportation access are also important. Well, we would love to be able to do this as a TOD project. Metro connections for both employees and, and the workforce, uh, as well as the population and patients are, are up there. And then, of course, pedestrian walkability. And we want this to be a, a site that is comfortable, that people like to walk around on, that they can go from the different facilities, uh, and there might be restaurants there, and uh, other amenities that make this a, a very successful medical campus. Next, and of course you'll understand this, how much is it going to cost? 